the guy, I can't remember his name, but I was heartbroken when they break up, spoiler alert, you won't want to read it as an adult. The guy had named his penis Ralph. Will stick with me forever. Oh, team. Team, team, team. I am not, I am not feeling it recently in terms of um, filming. I don't know what's, I don't know whether this is a passing phase or something that's more permanent, but I'm finding it increasingly difficult to want to go on camera and film anything. I actually think it's a passing phase and I've got really bad PMT, but um, it was just funny. I don't know why I've opened on this, it's really low energy, but I saw this video the other day and it was, you know these people that give loads of social media advice and then you look and they've got 6,000 people following them and you think, Okay, I mean, it's always really good advice. I don't mean that to sound as though I'm sort of putting them down for only having 6,000 followers on the account. But then sometimes I think, hmm, why is this not working? All of these tricks and tips, why is it not working better on your account? And sometimes I can find myself getting really fixated with all of these accounts that give advice on this and advice on that and how to make your, I don't know, YouTube video look more professional with no effort. Um, anyway, one of these videos was saying you need to have high energy. So, you know, all of the people that you see on Instagram, they're grabbing people's attention in the first few seconds. And they're like this, ah, I bought new boots. I love this book. Stop scrolling. This is the best makeup tip you're ever gonna learn. You know, it's all really chaotic, high energy. Oh my God, I just can't do it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. And I think this is why I'm developing and it's getting worse and worse, this problem where I just don't really wanna film anything because I think, oh, fuck's sake. I mean, really, I just wanna sit down, turn the camera on and have a little chat. I find it difficult to get into that thing where, that we're all supposed to do, where we're all larger than life and uh, uh, in your face. It's made me feel tired even talking about that. So, that wasn't the greatest start to a video, was it? But that's just how I'm feeling. I'm feeling a little bit subdued. It's my birthday on Thursday, turning 44. Absolutely no problem with it at all. I know it's a real cliche, but honestly, they are just bloody numbers. You know, there's 44-year-olds that act as though they're 75, and there are 44-year-olds who look and act and feel like they're 17. And then there's everybody in between. So I honestly think it's just ridiculous. I mean, obviously, yes, we are all getting older and the higher the number, the older you are. But, God, you know, there's not much point worrying about it, is there? There's nothing you can do to stop it. So I feel fine about that, but I'm in a bit of, um, oh God, I just really want to get my work life balance and everything sorted for the beginning of next year. And start the year, this year has been crazy with the book, just mainly with the book, <laughs> the book, took the kids to Disneyland or World, whichever one it is in Florida, that was just uh, quite a thing. And then I've been building the cabin. Well, I haven't been building the cabin, my brother-in-law and Rich have been building the cabin, but you know, that's been quite, it's been quite a lot going on. So I'm feeling a little bit, oof, end of year, fatigue. Actually, you can help me on this bit. You know, what What do you want to see? It's hard to ask you on here because I do feel guilty because I feel as though over the years YouTube has gently slid into the background because other parts of my work are more demanding and I actually enjoy filming videos like this more than I enjoy any other type of filming. So it's a shame really. Maybe that's what needs to change. Maybe I'll change that. Um, but yeah, let me know. What do you like to see? What do you want to see? This kind of stuff. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get on with this month's favourite, shall we? Two of which are TV programmes. Shall we go downstairs? Just for a change of scenery, because I feel like I've just absolutely bored the tits off you all in here, talking about that, and really we need a change of scene, don't we? I've got five favourites, as usual. I feel like I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, one favourite is my pair of boots. Oh, I know what we've got to do. Let's just go and quickly find my fifth favourite and we'll do that first. 
I'm doing a blog post to go with this, as always, um, but now it's on Substack, isn't it? I moved the blog to Substack, and if you are not subscribed, then do, because there's a free post every single Tuesday, um, which is a massive increase on blog posts that I was doing before when I was on my own platform. I was maybe managing to get one a month out, or one every two months. I think I had about four months where I didn't even post. So there's now one every single week, and lots and lots and lots of people tuning in for that. There's also a post on Friday for paid subscribers, so you can look at that option when you go over there, in case you fancy doing that, and having even more content. Um, but yeah, it's every single Tuesday. This is my fifth favourite on my post, and it... Do you know what? I talked about this because I was an ambassador for Avino um, a couple of years ago, and I talked about this when it came out, and I said how good it was, and, you know, and it was. But I feel like recently or maybe my skin has become drier since I first talked about this, and so it has more of an effect on me. But I feel like recently this has really come into its own in my skincare routine. It's a really, really soothing, nourishing moisturiser that's a balm texture. And it does leave a little bit of a residue, but a sort of comforting. If you've got really, really dry skin, you know, having no residue whatsoever when people say it disappears really quickly and you can't even feel that you've got it on, is not necessarily the effect that you're after, if that makes sense. Sometimes having a little, that oiliness, not it's not like a greasiness sitting on the skin, but sometimes having the feel that you've put something really robust onto your skin is nice, you know. And I've been using this under makeup in the day and getting to the end of the day and thinking, God, I still really feel that my face is very, very moisturised. And it's been this. The other day, I had to go out in a real hurry and I noticed my skin felt so good that I had to do that thing where you think back over your morning and try and work out what the hell, I was in the car, I was driving, and I was thinking, what did I put on my skin before the foundation? And it was this, spoiler alert, so uh, I think, I mean, it's really inexpensive on the scale of rich creams and how expensive those can get. It is actually really calming and soothing as well, which a lot of rich creams aren't. That's not their primary focus. And so if you do feel as though you've got that wintry skin that feels just irritated and crackly and annoying, nice one to get. All right, let's go downstairs now. Oh no, hold on. One more thing to do upstairs. I really wish I could be like, um, I'm really putting myself down today. I was gonna say, I really wish I could be like one of those vloggers that does it properly, like Lily, um, who, you know, cuts the next scene and it all looks really professional. But do you know what? Every single time I do it, I leave it till the very last minute. And then this is what we end up with, all right? This is what we end up with, me just, Clarting around with my tripod, it never being at the right height. Oh, actually. Hello. And uh, showing you random things around the house. Isn't it, Dexter? I want to show you the boots. Now, listen, I'm going to cut in some video of these boots in action because they are amazing. I'm currently wearing my tracksuit bottoms. It doesn't even go. This whole outfit doesn't even go. Um... And so I can't try them on because I cannot, I'm too cold. I cannot be bothered to get out of these. Look at these beauties. They're from Arquette. You know, you just find something and you think these are 100% me for that 1% of time that I actually spend in public where I can wear something like this. The leather is so soft. I love them so much and I would never normally respect anything this well. But I kept the cardboard inserts from the packaging and after wearing, I've been putting the cardboard back inside. I don't think you realise what a big step that is for me. It's a really comfortable heel, really easy to walk in, and I just love them. They look very 80s, which brings us on smoothly to what I'm going to talk about next. Let's just pop these back. Oh, well, look at that. That's quite arty, isn't it? We've got a book, and we've got um, two TV programmes. 
Now, we'll start with a book because it's right here. I've done my books and chocks post. I don't know whether I'm gonna do a books and chocks video this year because all I end up doing, oh, you know what, I might. Let me know whether you want the books and chocks video. I feel that it works better as a written post, personally. And if I video it, all I'll be doing is reading out basically what's in the post. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know whether you want that or need that, but let me know, let me know what you think. Oh, we're very, we're very lit from one side here, aren't we? It's not massively flattering, but there we go. So one of the books that's in my Books and Chocks post is All Fours. Now, I don't know whether you've heard of this. Uh, it's sort of divided opinion, but everybody, at least in my kind of age group, women, have been talking about this because it is completely bonkers. Some people, you might say it's a sort of um, sexual renaissance sort of book. I kind of don't really think that it is because the character in the book that we're following was pretty racy and on it sexually before the activities in the book really happen. But what happens is she's in her mid forties and she goes on a road trip to across America, right? And it's a really long distance road trip, weeks and weeks long. So it's supposed to be this, yeah, finding yourself sort of thing, momentous journey. She stops half an hour into the journey, sees this guy who's loads younger than her, married, um, who works in a car hire firm, and just decides that she wants him. I'm not gonna give you, I'm not gonna give too much away, but she, the whole thing is mad and you really have to sort of suspend your disbelief. I felt like I had to keep a very broad mind and be very open, very open-minded about it, really, because lots of the things in the book I couldn't really relate to, but I could, if I thought about parallel sort of feelings or parallel events in my own life. Um, so it's very much, I don't know, about maybe refinding yourself in midlife, sort of the intricacies, I suppose, of womanhood, but in a massively bawdy, riotous kind of way. I mean, it is mad and I loved it but I did have to keep reminding myself, keep an open mind. Some parts of it I found a bit frustrating, a bit annoying, but one thing I will say is that it is definitely not boring and it is a real conversation starter if you meet somebody else that's read it. So, that is in my favorites. Uh, in my Books and Chocks post, I matched that with, paired it with the sea salt truffles from Charbonnel and Walker, which I've eaten, it's empty. It's just a fake little box there, they were delicious. I slipped my own book into Books and Chocks this year, so maybe I should do a video. Should I do a video? Should I do one for next week? I think I'm just feeling a little bit, a bit weary, a bit knackered out. Maybe I will get a second wind and do a video. Let me know. The final two things I want to talk about are both TV programmes. The first is Rivals, which is an adaptation of the Jilly Cooper book. Now, I read Rivals when I was a teenager. I read a lot of Jilly Cooper when I was a teenager. And I like to think that quite a lot of my sexual knowledge, let's say, or what I thought about sex came from Jilly Cooper books. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But, you know, it was the 90s and that was kind of what was out. I don't know whether if you're the same sort of age as me, the first book that I ever read that had any kind of sex in was Judy Bloom forever and that went round our school there was one copy and you just had to wait until it made its way around to you maybe there were two or three copies you had to hide it because it was banned because it had this part in it where she lost her virginity the guy I can't remember his name but I was heartbroken when they break up spoiler alert you won't want to read it as an adult the guy had named his penis Ralph will stick with me forever so Rivals has been made by Disney and honestly, I don't think anything in the past few years has quite given me the lift, the joy, the laughs, just everything. I cannot fault 
I just wish there'd been more of it. It stopped abruptly and too soon and I am actually quite bereft. I thought everything about it was amazing. The way they captured the 80s, it was very nostalgic for me because obviously I grew up in the 80s and when they had the garden party and they, they do the birdie song, I was like, oh my God, how long is it since I've heard that song? But it was at every party and every disco. Um, and just everything about it, the acting is next level. And it's just all so much fun. It's bold, it's outrageous, it's like unapologetic. I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. And I also feel like Danny Dyer, who's in it, plays Fred Fred, it's the performance of his lifetime. He's absolutely amazing. So, I, I'm, it's, if I had to do a top five favourites of the year, that would be in it. But maybe I should do a top five favourites of the year. What would they be? Rivals? Bluebeard at theatre, Emma Rice's Bluebeard. Oh my God, absolutely incredible. Have to think about it. My book? Oh! I know you can't, you can't vote for your own stuff. Why is there a whole ball of string unraveling in this box? Little quick note that my book, How Not To Be A Supermodel, hello, which is also unapologetic, bold, vibrant, outrageous, nostalgic, a bit like Rivals, is now out in the US. I'm gonna do a whole thing on it because I've got a feeling that maybe somebody said that maybe sold out already and they've got more coming in stock, but it is out. You can order it now um, on Amazon in the US. I'll check about other booksellers because I'm not too sure. It's not handled by my publisher here in the UK. So, And the audiobook, which is absolutely flying, is also now available in the US. So I shall put links to that in the uh, description below for you. If you haven't yet read this, and if you're in the UK and you're thinking, what the hell do I buy? any of my girlfriends, my sister, my mum, my cousin, what do I buy them for Christmas? This. There is not a single person I can think of that won't enjoy it unless it's just somebody without any sense of humour whatsoever. You don't need to be interested in modelling, you don't need to be interested in me. I could be swapped out for pretty much anyone, but it is, I guarantee you, a complete riot. Got that in, didn't I? Wasn't even intending to do that. Very, very good. Self-promotion, Ruth, for someone that's not always been very good at that kind of thing. Yeah, read the post for the rest of the book and chocolate pairing, so, because it's really good. Oh, if I may say to myself, what on earth are you doing up there? Last thing on my list. Disclaimer. It's another TV programme. I feel like I'm doing charades. One word. That's film, wasn't it? TV. TV. This is a drama that's kind of like a bit like a thriller really it's a drama with Kate Blanchett am I saying her name right all of a sudden that sounds really wrong Blanchett how do you say Kate Blanchett is it Kate how do you right who's in disclaimer Australian actress also in Lord of the Rings how do you say her name Blanchett, Blanchett. thank you I was saying it it sounded really really weird did you did you fix it why are you walking strangely up. It's the time. Oh shit. It's time to pick the kids up. Oh my god, I've got to be really quick because I didn't realise it's school run time. It's also gone really dark since I've been sat here. This drama is about a woman who receives a book and it's a fictional book um, which is mentioned at the beginning and it's about a thing that happened in her life which is a very dark secret. So she had this really, um, I don't know, I don't want to give anything away, but bad experience that she's wanted to forget. And this book comes along and it has been written by the mother of somebody who's died in this bad experience. I'm not going to tell you anymore because it will spoil it, but if you watch the first... Can you just hold on? Yeah, it's right. You can just do what you need to do. But I've lost the light, so I've got to, I've got to carry on. That's Rich washing his hands, just in case you're wondering what's going on. It's very chaotic. It's got to go on the school run. If you watched the first two or three episodes and then stopped, you would honestly think that this was the worst 
recommendation I've ever made to you in my life. Because Richard's sister recommended it to us and we actually rang her to say, what is this? And if it doesn't get better, we're never going to trust you with another recommendation ever. You've got to give it until the end and then everything makes sense. That's all I will say. Just stick with it and then let me know what you think. So, those are my five favourites this month. Sorry I started the video on such a morose note. I hope hopefully it's got happier as we've gone along. It's just one of those days, one of those months. Yeah, let me know about the books and chocks video. If we're gonna do that, I will film it and it will go up next week or maybe the week after, because it can be a last minute gift thing, maybe. That could be quite helpful. And then we will be off for Christmas. I will be, not that it matters so much for YouTube, because it's always sort of two or three weeks in between anyway, but I'll be off for two or three weeks. I don't know why I'm telling you that now, because it's the end of November, but um, I'm waffling, so I will see you next time.